Another class of compounds besides molecular compounds are ionic compounds. And ionic compounds are composed of ions, cations and anions. We already know that we can use the periodic table to predict the charges of main group metals and main group nonmetals. For example, sodium is a positive 1 cation because sodium is found in group 1 of the periodic table. Aluminum in group 13 makes a positive 3. Oxygen, a nonmetal in group 16, take the last digit 6, subtract 8. Oxygen always forms a negative 2 anion. Transition metals usually make more than one possible charge, but these three transition metals are ones that you need to remember, and they always make just these charges positive 2 for zinc and cadmium, and positive 1 for silver. Also, you need to memorize table 3.5, which gives you the polyatomic ions. Things like NO3 with a negative 1 charge is called nitrate, and NO2 with a negative 1 charge is called nitrite. Notice the greater number of oxygens gets that 8 ending, compared to the one with fewer, that's the ite ending. And you can extend that. Here is a set of four from that same table of polyatomics. If you remember the base, chlorate has three oxygens. When you take one away, chlorate turns into chlorite. And if you keep taking another one away, it still ends in ite, but now we have the hypo prefix, meaning we have even less oxygen. Going the opposite way, instead of using the prefix hyper, in chemistry we drop the high part and it's just per, so it's per chlorate. These also apply to bromine and iodine, so you can replace chlorate with bromate and bromite and so on. And the same thing for iodate and iodite. Now, most main group metals only make one type of cation, but there are five common cations that have more than one possible charge. And these are in group 13, 14, and 15 of the periodic table. For example, we would predict that thallium should be a positive 3 because thallium is found in group 13 of the periodic table. But it also makes a positive 1. The same sort of thing happens for lead and tin. Because they're in group 14, we predict positive 4, but they also exist as a positive 2. Bismuth and antimony, positive 5, but they also exist as positive 3. So you can see that you have two charges. You have the predicted charge and you have the predicted charge minus two. Because these transition metals, other than the three that you have to memorize, exist as different cations, when you name them you have to give the Roman numeral in the name that tells you what charge we're talking about. So here are some examples of ionic compounds. You can tell they're ionic because they're made up of cations and anions. We have the cation first, the anion second. Sodium is always a positive one, so we don't need the Roman numerals. We just write sodium, and then, just like before, when we were naming molecular compounds, bromine changes to bromide. Here's one with silver and oxygen. Silver is always a positive one charge, so it's just silver oxide. But when we get to thallium, remember thallium can make multiple charges. So we can figure out what the charge of the thallium is because we know that the charge of fluorine is always a negative one. All compounds must have a net charge that's zero. So if the thallium were a positive three, this wouldn't add up to zero. The thallium has to be the positive one version. 
So you would write the name as thallium, parentheses, Roman numeral 1, and then fluorine changes to fluoride. You do the same thing with iron and chlorine. We know that each chlorine is a negative 1 when it's a chloride anion. That means that the iron has to be a positive 3. We couldn't tell that because it's a transition metal, but now we know when it's paired up with chlorine that this version of iron must be the positive 3 version. There also exist chemicals that are called hydrates that have some water loosely connected to it. You name this the same way. So you start with the ionic part, and this would be copper positive 2 version chloride. And then this, this dot represents the water that's connected. And here you use the prefix di for 2, and then the word hydrate for water. So you put it all together, it's copper 2 chloride dihydrate. And then the last one, MgSO4, magnesium, doesn't need any Roman numerals because it's always the same positive 2. SO4 is the polyatomic sulfate, and the prefix for 7 is hepta, no space, and then you end it with hydrate. So magnesium sulfate heptahydrate is the correct name.